Hello beautiful people, what is up? I moved the angle just a little bit there, but hi. Uh, today's video I am going to talk a little bit about the eating disorder that I think I probably had when I was in high school and also as a kid. I don't have like a doctor's definition or like diagnosis or anything like that about this, but having now worked in a treatment center for teen girls, for almost a year. Um, I've heard about this particular eating disorder that's, it's not that it's rare, but it is relatively new and it's not very like broadly spoken about. So after hearing about it and the symptoms that, that often show up and things like that, the more I see myself in those definitions. So this is totally just me kind of speculating on it. What I saw that makes me go, hmm. So I wanted to talk about it because I'm not like ashamed of it, but I, I really want to bring some more light to this diagnosis, not for me personally, but because I feel like it's not broadly talked about and uh, it's not a very well known one. And so I feel like if you can get information on the eating disorder itself um, and like what I saw in myself, I just want to kind of chat through like what I see. This video could definitely be triggering to you if you struggle with an eating disorder or anything like that. So I mean, bear bear that in mind and please take care of yourselves before deciding to watch this video. But I've been wanting to film this for a little bit of time now and yeah, so let's just get right on into this. So the eating disorder that I found out about the more that I worked at my work was, it's called ARFID. It stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. Um, and I'm gonna actually pull up the technical definition of this. WaldenEatingDisorders.com. ARFID is also known as Extreme Picky Eating, which is an eating disorder characterized by highly selective eating habits disturbed feeding patterns, or both. It often results in significant nutrition and, and energy deficiencies and for children failure to gain weight. It's characterized by persistent failure to meet appropriate nutritional or energy needs, which can lead to many different issues. Looking at the causes, it can be triggered by a specific event or fear that arises, such as a fear of vomiting or choking. At times, this will have been triggered by a specific choking or vomiting act incident, but it can also arise when someone sees a person vomit and becomes intensely anxious about this happening to them. Looking at alsana.com about ARFID, this one says, it's an eating or feeding disturbance that involves limitations in the amount of food or amount or type of food consumed. Individuals with ARFID exhibit the following symptoms. Apparent lack of interest in food. Avoid ba food based on sensory characteristics such as texture, smell, and sound, like when mixing yogurt was an example. Um, and they have concerns about the physical consequences of eating, such as nausea or feeling overly full, things like that. ARFID symptoms also often include significant weight loss, nutritional deficiencies, limited food variety, and dependence on nutritional supplements. So this does not involve distress about body shape or size necessarily, but it can often be hand in hand with other things. So the things that really caught my attention when I learned about ARFID um, in my work that I do was mainly the part of not having enough options to eat. Basically being hypersensitive to food and food textures or colors or tastes or whatever it is. Common symptom then so is like only having a very short list of food items that you're willing to eat. So that really is the first thing that went, oh my god, is this like, is this a name for how picky I was as a kid so I I was an extremely picky eater as a kid and was up like when I was little and I have had experiences with like the vomiting thing and then being freaked out by vomiting I had a really bad experience when I was I think I was like five or six my I was underweight because I wouldn't eat anything um, and my doctor told my mom to like feed me any protein that I really liked and give her as much as possible and I really liked bacon and so this one night I was willing to eat and so my mom gave me a lot and a lot a lot a lot of bacon 
and I ended up getting sick in the middle of the night and it was just this terrible experience. Honestly, I don't remember much of it, but I've heard the story many, many times. It was a gross, gross time. I'm not gonna get into the details of that because I don't like it. I don't wanna talk about vomiting all that much. Not specifically that event, although I'm sure it did take part, but I, I think that there was a, that all matches for me. Looking at the things that I was willing to eat as a kid, it basically consisted of bread, um, but not brown bread. It had to be white bread. Um, sometimes sourdough was fine, but I just really wanted like the white wonder bread, the soft bread. I wanted it to be soft. I didn't like toasted bread. Cheese, but it had to be American cheese or cheddar cheese. It had to be yellow. It couldn't be white and it had to be and this is still some of these Some of these things are still pretty true So the cheese had to be like fresh out of the fridge I couldn't eat it if it had been sitting out because it gets a different texture and I still to this day don't really like That that texture once it's been out of the fridge for a little bit now melted cheese is a whole different thing because I liked melted cheese but not on a lot of things so like i didn't like pizza um eventually i was okay with pizza but it couldn't have any pepperoni nothing on it and i didn't like the marinara sauce so i would actually take the cheese off scrape off the marinara sauce and then put the cheese back on and before that i wasn't even willing to touch any of the bread or anything if it had marinara sauce on it i liked noodles but it had to be spaghetti noodles or like angel hair stuff like that it had to be noodles that didn't have holes or anything because i didn't like the texture of the sauce getting inside and i didn't really like sauce at all there was a long period of time where i only ate noodles with butter and salt i couldn't eat it with any sauce um, I didn't like any sort of any sort of anything that had small pieces in it like marinara sauce tends to have the little uh, like tomatoes or like sometimes alfredo sauce or pesto sauce will have the little bits of greens in it. No, absolutely not. Wouldn't eat it. I didn't really like a lot of meat up until far later. Um, I was I now eat chicken, but I'm still really weird about the texture of meat I don't do beef almost at all. I will do some of the like vegan um, Fake meat stuff, but I, if it tastes like the beyond burger is a little bit too much like beef I don't do that. So I don't do beef pork I do like bacon still actually there was a period of time after that vomiting experience that I didn't eat bacon for years but now I do like bacon again and I like pulled pork but no other kind of pork there are times where I get like a bite that's too fatty and then I can't continue eating if that happens same with chicken if I like get a gristle of some sort then I stop eating I can't eat past it so my list of food was very limited I would eat mac and cheese there was a period of time that I would only eat mac and cheese if it had pink dye in it I hated milk still do actually um, I would I would drink chocolate milk and strawberry milk but it had to be extremely mixed with the sugar stuff by Nesquik like way too much of a serving no greens no veggies no carrots no salad no tomatoes no nothing nothing there was nothing on the list as a kid that i was willing to eat um and it wasn't even like i tried things and didn't like it it was like i'm not putting that in my mouth like mm -mm. and i still struggle with that to this day the other day at work they had gooseberries which look kind of like a very tiny green tomato like the size of a grape and supposedly they taste like grapes. So I see it and it's a different color than like a green grape. It's more like a green tomato color, like that solid green. And I was like, what is it? And I had to open it up before I was willing to put it in my mouth. And I opened it up and there's seeds in it like a tomato. And it looked like the texture of a tomato. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in my mouth. I just, I couldn't, nope. It wasn't gonna happen. It was not willing. So that's an example. There's, there have been times where I am willing to try things. A lot of times the th way that I can convince myself to try new stuff is if the texture f sounds like it's gonna match something I already know that I'm okay with the texture. The texture is really big for me. So for example, um, I haven't tried bell peppers in a really, really long time. I had never put one in my mouth on purpose at least. I had never tried a bell pepper, definitely never a raw one. I had had some cooked ones like in things, but I had never 
eaten a piece of raw bell pepper. We have them a lot at work for like snacks and stuff. And so I asked one of my coworkers, what's the texture like? And they explained it like it's crunchy, kind of like a cucumber. Um, but I was like really concerned that it was gonna be like a tomato and it's not like a tomato, not anywhere near that juicy, like very specific. I had my coworker like go into descriptive detail of what a bell pepper feels like and then I was willing to try it and I actually like bell peppers who knew I again I don't have a diagnosis for this I'm not 100% sure that I would be diagnosed with this disorder with this eating disorder if if I went to a doctor for it but I see a lot of things that didn't make sense to me growing up match what this uh eating disorder is defined as and it makes me feel like this aha moment of, oh, I wasn't just like making it up because I, I got told a lot as a kid that like, you should just eat it, like just try it. And that was from like parents, that was from family members, that was from friends, like this was all over the place. It wasn't just like from one thing or anything. Uh, and like eating at school was really hard. Like I did not, I was not okay with doing like lunches at school because you don't have a choice in the options like if it's one thing that i won't eat then i'm just not gonna eat i'm not like saying that this is definitely like what my eating habits are defined as but they they just i see a lot of commonalities in it and i was talking through this with one of my friends at work and she was saying like how do you know the difference between just being a picky eater and this disorder and I was like honestly I don't and I haven't gone to the doctor for it either it's not like I have a definition for you I feel like I took like an hour break for this video but so I have no idea where I was but I was getting basically to the end of this one so essentially that's like what I've noticed the similarities and stuff like that so I hope you guys found this interesting and maybe helpful, stuff like that. In the meantime, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, as well as hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I make videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, and I also have all my other social media and my other channels, my podcast, everything like that, linked down below in case you're interested. So I hope you'll check those out as well, and I'll see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye!